as the saying goes, you win some, you lose some. And that's the exact same case in Ebony. One of the best ways for you to learn from your experiences is to go through your reports. And we're going to cover the basics of doing that here. Hi, and welcome to Red Ebony. I am Akayasha. You can call me Aka. And in this video, we're going to be looking at analyzing battle reports. For a PvP player in Ebony, one of the best things that you can do is to get into the habit of saving and reviewing your battle reports. And if you're someone like me, you have a ton of battle reports saved up to look at later. Now, this is particularly important for two reasons. One is figuring out areas of improvement for your PvP. And the second is measuring the level of improvements that you have done so far. This is particularly important if you've been doing work on improving your generals, research, and things like that. So let's open a battle report and let's go through the basics of what is in there. Here we have a battle report and the first things that you want to look at is the power of both sides. This shows you the starting point of both parties before the battle. The next thing that you want to look at is the power lost. This indicates the amount of power that both parties have lost in this particular battle. And this is of significant importance because a lot of the times in Ebony, it's not a simple question of whether you won the attack or whether you lost the attack. A lot of times, the amount of power that is lost or the power exchange is more important than simply whether you lost the battle or you won the battle. So be sure to pay attention to this part. Next, you want to look at the total troops or the troop count. This indicates the amount of troops that both parties have. And this puts into perspective the power lost. For example, on the opposing side, if the opponent has a high troop count, that might mean that you bit off a bit more than you can chew attacking that opponent. On the flip side though, when an opponent has a high troop count but a low overall power, that could indicate a high amount of low level troops. So when you're reviewing your reports, you want to take a note of this, how many troops you have on your side and how many troops the opponent has on their side. Next, we have the wounded troops and this indicates how many troops were wounded on both sides. During your initial analysis of the report, this part and a lot of what follows below it are not particularly important at the initial analysis phase. And that is because, particularly for the wounded troops, this is reflected in the power lost. So to an extent, you will have an idea of this number based on the amount of power that is lost. Once you're through with this section, you want to scroll down and then take a look at the reinforcements. And what is particularly important here when you are doing your initial analysis is whether there are reinforcements present or not. You don't necessarily need to go through all the details of the power loss and the troop count for the reinforcements initially. You can do that later when you're taking a deeper analysis of the report. The next thing that you want to do is to scroll down and take a look at the generals. Here, the generals are important, particularly because they give an indication of the types of troops that were used or should have been used. In my case, I have Himiko and Nar on my attacking, so you would expect range troops to be on the attacking side of this report. On the other hand, you see George Dewey. You would expect George Dewey to be a world general defending a keep. It is good to have an idea of the generals that we use because this informs the further analysis that we do later on. In addition, you have a look at the power of the generals, the level of stars, and things like that. Finally, after reviewing the generals, you want to scroll down and take a look at the subcities. 
Here, the main thing that you want to look for when you're doing your initial analysis is whether the subsidies are present or they are not. And that can be very important depending on the type of situation that this PVP battle took place in. For example, if you were attacking a keep or you were taking a defense on your castle, the presence of subs would be very important. However, if this PVP situation took place in a building, like in battlefield, then there'd be no subs present and that would be perfectly normal. Now, all these things that we've mentioned here in this particular phase, once you get used to it, will probably take you about 30 seconds to look at and analyze. Next, we're going to go to the true buff section. This is where you find the buffs for both sides in the battle. And the points that you focus on when reviewing this buff section will depend on which side you are on, whether you are on the attacking or the defending side. The main thing that you want to focus on here, if you are on the attacking side, is the buffs for the main troop type that you were attacking with. So, in my case, the attack that I went with was a ranged attack. So, the main thing that is important for me when reviewing this report is my ranged troop stats. The others are good to know when you are doing further analysis, but at first glance, that is where you should go to. And what you look at is guided by the generals that were used. If you are on the defending side and you were defending in your castle, what would be important for you to look at there are all your stats. The buffs for all your troop types will be important because most likely all of them would have been present in your castle. If you were defending in a building with a particular march, then the same with the attacker, want to focus on the buffs for the troop type that you were mostly defending with. And this part is particularly important because this is one of the areas where you can use to measure the amount of improvements that you have been doing. If you have been working on your generals, for example, or doing research, where the benefit of the work that you have been doing will show up is right here. So you'd want to pay attention to this section. In the same light, you want to scroll down and then take a look at the debuffs on both sides. And particularly when you are in a defensive situation, this section is actually quite important. This is also significantly influenced by whether you had subs present or not. One of the main places that that will show up is in the debuffs that you have here. In addition, if you have been working on improving your debuffs, debuff gear, generals, and things like that, this is where it will show up. Now, the next thing that you want to look at once you've completed reviewing this section is you want to come up to battle details and go through the troop section. The first thing that you want to look at when you're in this troop section is the opposing side. You want to check that everything is okay on the opposing side. So, for example, if you scouted the target before attacking, do the troops that you see here match what was seen in the scout report? So, you want to go through and have a quick look at that. And you just flip through, you see what troops were present, what got killed, and things like that. And you can scroll all the way down until you get to the end of the troop list. Now, for your side, what you want to do, if you were on the attacking side, for example, you want to make sure that the troops you sent out were actually correct. That you sent out the right march with the right types of troops. That's the main focus that you have here. Once you've checked that out and everything looks okay, then you start going through your troops, see what killed, what didn't, what troop type got the most amount of kills, and which ones were not particularly helpful in the attack or in the defense. If you come up here, 
you can see at the very top there it has the legend of what these symbols are so for example if we look at the t14 range here the first one that we have is the troops that survived below that we have the amount of troops that this tier killed below that we have deserters on the next side we have the amount of troops that were wounded below that we have the amount of troops that were killed and finally below that we have the amount of troops that were sent to the holy palace as troop souls and you can see that it's pretty much the same thing as you go all the way down okay so that covers the basics of what you need to know when you are reviewing a report let's go through another report and do a quick run through of the things that you should focus on here is another report and in this case i'm on the attacking side we take a note of the powers when we started i was at 2 billion and the person i'm attacking is just under 700 million and we look at the power loss the important thing here is did you win the power exchange or did you lose the power exchange in this situation i lost the attack but i won the power exchange next we look at the total amount of troops and when i look at the troop count with the person's power i get the idea that there were quite a decent amount of high level troops in this person's keep but that is something that you can easily verify when you look at the troop section and if you come here first glance you can see a lot of t13s t12s going all the way down so decent amount of fairly high level troops the amount of wounded that we have not particularly important because we've already looked at the power exchange which gives an indication of the wounded so we can skip that if we go all the way down we look we see no reinforcements then we look at the generals i'm attacking with range this is my range combination the person is defending in their keep so you would expect wall generals then we take a quick look at the level of the generals the power of the generals we look at it it's a decent matchup so that's okay and in some cases when you are reviewing your report let's say you lost a defense once you get to this wall general section that could quickly be an indication of what went wrong because if you had a situation like this for example <laughs> in all honesty there's not much point reviewing the rest of the report because when you have this kind of situation, you already know instantly what went wrong. You had the wrong general on your wall. Okay, back to the report. If we scroll down, we see subsidies. All we want to do here is check whether the subsidies are present or not. Okay, we scroll up and we come to the buffs. Now, again, since I'm on the attacking side, attacking with my ranged generals, I'm looking at particularly my range troop buffs. On the defender side, he's defending in his keep, so all the stats are relevant in that situation. Next, we scroll down and we look at the debuffs. Here, we can see that my debuffs are significantly higher than my opponent's debuffs. And if we compare them to the buffs as well, I can see that I cut down my opponent's buffs by quite a bit so the amount of power exchange that i got was significantly aided by the debuffs that i have and also the fact that my opponent had lower debuffs than i did if the person you're attacking has debuffs that are close to yours or are high enough to cut down what you're attacking with significantly then that might be a big indicator of why you lost the battle okay now we go to the troops and like i said first thing you want to check the troops on the opposing side is everything okay are the troops that you see here in line with what you might have seen in the scout reports before you attacked the opponent 
And this is particularly important because in some cases, you have a scout report where you scouted the keep and you saw a certain amount of troops in there. And by the time you attack and you look at the attack report, those troops are not there. Meaning that between the span of when you scouted and when you attacked, the person has ghosted troops or has sent them out. They are not there. That might be an indicator of why you lost the battle. So you scroll down, just make sure that all the troops are there and you can take a look at what died and those kind of things. On your side, first thing you want to do, check that the troops that you sent or the troops that you have are okay. Are you missing any troop tiers or any troop types? Did you send the wrong types of troops? Did you have your range general, but you accidentally sent ground? Those kind of things. You scroll down. Are all your layers there? Are your troop counts correct? That's the first thing that you want to check. And that's good. When you scroll further down, another thing you might want to check, the amount of subsidies that you have. Are all your subs there? So you can just quickly take a look down, count the number of sub generals that you have here. If everything is okay, then that's fine. If you're missing one, then that might be something that you need to look at later on. Next thing that you want to look at when you're looking at your side, you want to look at what troops, what tiers got the most kills. What killed what, what died. So, for example, you compare your T-14 troops with your T-13 troops. What killed the most? What died the most? Compare that with your other layers. And by doing this analysis and comparison, you can start to see which of your troop types are doing the most work, what aren't working, what are just getting killed off, those kind of things. And with that, we have covered the basics of what you need to know when you're analyzing battle reports. If you like what we covered in the video, it would be great if you can give it a like. And in a further video, I will be doing some more analysis on battle reports and looking at what went wrong and how to improve and things like that. If you have a report that you would like me to review and we'll be happy having it feature in the video, reach out to me in game, send me the report and there's a chance that it might make it into the video. Thank you very much for your time guys. Aka signing out.